Hi Mike, how are you? Oh, Alright. It's a lovely garden this, I bet it's very good for wildlife. It's not bad at all, that's why I uh, set this lot up um, really to, to do bird photography in the garden. The idea is that I can use uh, my garden during the winter when normally we wouldn't be out here uh, as an, out, an outdoor studio in a sense. Yes, yeah, lovely. I, I, I believe you've got a hide as well. Yeah, over there. Oh yeah. Um, which is, I guess, a small shed. It's big enough for myself, but obviously uh, very much a one-man hide. Um, but, it, but it allows me to be close to the birds without them being streaked. And it gives me a good range across the garden, so I, I can look at any end of the garden, really, uh, where, where I've got things set up for the birds. Um, this is a, a homemade jig. Um, I've got my feeders set up much as you would in, in any garden, um, but it allows me to mount twigs next to the feeders and a nice sort of mossy branch or something above the open bird table. And the, the idea is that you, you do try and photograph the birds as they land on the branches. Um, you don't want pictures of birds on feeders, it's very unattractive. Um, one of the things is you, you quickly get to know that some birds will stay still for perhaps one and a half seconds, two seconds. Um, other birds will hop onto it and within half a second they're onto the feeder. Um, so you know that with some birds you've got to be much quicker than others. Um, call tits very quickly go from there to there. Um, so you, you're talking half a second to get your shot really. I suppose that when you're in your hide, you won't, the birds won't notice that you're drinking wine in there, will they? No, no, no. It'd be beer anyway, Steve. <laughs> yeah, we know you're here. <laughs> um, the, the thing about the hide is, although it's a, a big open front, uh, because I've got that scrim hanging down, I can see out quite well. Um, but I'm, I'm reasonably masked from the birds. Um, obviously, I've got bright, bright grey hair and, and, you know, white hands. And, and if you're moving your hands around a lot, even in the hide, or your head around a lot, uh, they will detect that. So I tend to wear fingerless gloves and, and a bobble hat to hide my grey hair um, so that I don't stand out at all, really. And uh, the birds will have to keep coming and they just don't realise I'm there at all. Uh, camera movement's got to be really slow. You know, if you make big jerky movements with your camera, uh, that will spook them. So you do sit on a tripod? I've got a gimbal head in there, uh, and I, which is on a shelf, and I mount it on a gimbal head, which gives me reasonably smooth movements, but a good degree of stability. So I can I can shoot um, at f8 at 100, you know, 125th of a second, quite comfortably, and still get a sharp shot. Mm, the birds don't move much, so do they? Well, suppose they've settled down on the uh, <laughs> You move around quite a lot, yeah, do it, do it, yeah, they? yeah. You, you've, you've, you've not a lot of time to get your shots um, and it's best um, to use AI focus um, and, and burst and, and fire short bursts because you're always going to get one image that's that little bit sharper than the rest so it, it's worth firing a burst of six or seven shots. You know. What type of burst do you get? I can see there's a robin over the garden. Um, <coughs> broad range I get. Uh, I've had bullfinch, siskin, um, Blue tits, cold tits, long tailed tits, um, great tits, robins, chaffinch, goldfinch, crikey, um, jays, woodpeckers, you get a good mix. Yeah, that's great. Uh, plagued with grey squirrels and, I think every is and feral pigeons, hence the ground feeder has this cage around it, uh, which keeps the pigeons off. Unfortunately, it doesn't keep the grey squirrels off. <laughs> Hi Mike, we're now in your lovely house. Um, when did you get into photography? Um, I started photography as a, as a teenager and uh, I, I was going out with a girl at the time, we thought it'd be nice to take some photographs. I didn't have a camera, so we bought a Kodak Instamatic. Right. Um, and the, the images were so appalling when we got them back, I thought I'd like a proper camera. And I, I bought a second hand uh, Russian rangefinder called a Zorki, oh, yeah, which was interchangeable, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what got me going. And uh, I bought it second hand. It had no instruction book. I hadn't a clue what all the dials did. Didn't even know how to put a film in it. 
Um, so I was off down the library every other day swapping photo books and, and basically taught myself for over a period of time. But the, the first eight or nine films I put through it were just rubbish. They just all ended up in the bin. Yeah, exactly. So that's how I started, you know. Yeah, many, I mean, many years ago. That'd be totally manual with no light meter. No, I, totally absolutely machine. no light meter. So you have to know what you're doing. Totally manual. You you just I had to learn uh, all about the relationship between ISO, uh, shutter speed, and aperture. But it was a great way to learn, and you never forget it when you've when you've learned that way. Um, and I always work manual now. Very rare. I, I might use aperture priority occasionally, but nearly all the time I'm working manually. All right, so then you joined the Lancaster Photographic Society. How long ago was that? Oh, um, I've certainly taken photographs for quite a long time before I joined the Society. I don't know the exact date I joined the Society. I was in my mid-30s uh, and I'm 67 next, so I must have been a member now at least 30 years, perhaps, perhaps a little over. I bet you've seen a lot of changes. Lots of changes, yeah. Lots, lots of, of lots venues. Of uh, <laughs> <laughs> lots of venues, yeah, yeah. Um, usually because they, they get sold on or we, we outgrow the space. Um, so, yeah, it's a perennial problem, changing venues. And presidents. And you've been president quite a few times yourself, haven't you? I've been president, um, yeah, three or four times on this track. Um, been programme secretary at least three times, I think. Right, right. Um, so contributed a lot. And I've been, on, I've been on the committee for most of my membership, really. Right, right. Uh, first couple of years I wasn't on the committee um, and I've had a couple of short breaks but most of the time I've been on the, the committee. Yeah. And you enjoy it? A lot busier, a lot busier now on the committee than it used to be. Uh, we do a lot more than we used to do. Well, it's, we've got a lot of members on the committee now and we've got, I think we've got 12 of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, which me and you... Well, but there's always been around eight or nine. Right. Um, so it's always been a reasonable size committee. Um, but the... Um, yeah, we're doing far more as a club than, than we ever did. Uh, as I mentioned when we were chatting earlier, um, when you joined the club then, it was pretty much taken for granted. You knew what you were doing with photography. It was a photographer's club. Uh, there was no facility there to help people get started or to, to learn the basics. That They expected that you knew what you were doing with the camera when you joined. So. Yeah, when I, I joined, I was very uh, hesitant because I thought it'd be a lot of stiff, stuffy, old-fashioned guys all knew each other and you know uh, knew what they were doing. And uh, I actually find that it's completely the opposite. Of that it's a lot of really happy, you know, different um, levels of experience. Everybody gets on with each other. Um, it's very light-hearted. Um, totally different than what I thought. I mean, there were all fairly recent changes over the last 10, 12 years, really. Up until then, it really was very much a photographer's club. Mm. Um, it's made a difference getting some female members. It's, it's, it's made a real change. We only had um, two regular female members for quite a long time. And we didn't have very many young people. I mean, at one point, I was the youngest member and I was in my mid-50s. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot. We've got more younger members, we've got more female members, and it's made the club a lot more vibrant. Yeah, I've noticed one thing about the female members, they're very competitive. They want to win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> uh, the, these people I go to the pub with, uh, you know, I've got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, yeah the girls have, have made it more competitive and it's, it's good. It's yeah, good yeah, that yeah, they've done yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know. On the subject of genre, I believe you've got quite a large portfolio of different types of genre, but I've been told you into taking photographs of uh, stone mo monuments. Yeah, stone I, I, I enjoy visiting sort of early sites, um, even Neolithic sites. Um, I photographed long barrows, um, stone circles. In fact, I had a, uh, a weekend break in a, in a cottage right in the middle of uh, Avebury Stone Circle, which was brilliant. So it's all around you? The, oh, it's huge. The, oh, it's Avebury's... The village sits inside the stone circle. Oh, it's that big. That. That's um, but, you know, I was on site for early morning photography so I could get out just as the sun was rising uh, and before, you know, busloads of tourists arrived. Um, so, yeah, I enjoy photographing old sites and I, and I often do them in infrared as well, um, right. which gives a different slant. Um, you know, if you go to, say, Castle Rig, um, the stones are pretty much uh, a similar tone to, to the background mountains, 
Um, but if you shoot them in infrared, uh, it turns the foliage much lighter, so the stones really stand out. You know, fascinating. I was, I've uh, heard that you've been doing a bit of uh, microscope type photography as well. Yeah, yeah. I've just uh, recently bought a microscope, and I thought it'd be fun to dabble and uh, have a go at shooting down a microscope. I haven't done a great deal yet, but. Uh, I've been growing uh, vitamin C crystals and looking at those at you know 400 times magnification. Um, thing is, with microscopes, you're only looking at a tiny, tiny, thin plane at any one time. So if you want to to get anything with depth, you, you're into image stacking again, uh, which is quite difficult. It means actually doing adjustments on the microscope to to go wow. up and down. So um, I haven't perfected it yet, but. Uh, It'll take a while, it's a different sort of photography. Yeah, I, when I was a child I had a, a microscope and I used to get pond water and the things you find living in there, you know, it looks just like clear water but when you get it under yeah. a microscope completely. Yeah, oh yeah, you get rotty furs and all sorts of things, it's very interesting. Um, the one I bought is a, a trinocular one, so I've got two eyepieces but there's a separate port on the top to mount the camera on. Ah, right. Uh, so I can still look at what I'm doing um, and the have the camera on at the same time. So is that built specifically for uh, photography? The, they have a port specifically to mount a camera and you can actually buy a little CCD camera that slots into the eyepiece okay. but, I, but I use a little uh, M-series Canon camera on it. Enjoy it. A mirrorless one. It, it's different. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm still dabbling but, but it's another another area of photography I've, I've never tried. So you've got, you've got wildlife, you've got uh, stone circles, you do landscape, what else yeah. do you photograph? In infrared. Infrared, yeah. yeah. Infrared, yeah. Um, I, had a, I had a camera converted a lot of years ago. I, I used to, I had dark room, I used to be a tra you know, shoot traditionally. Um, and I used to shoot infrared film, uh, Kodak HIE, which is a very um, grainy 35mm, had grain like golf balls. Wow. And it has no anti elation layer on the back. So all the highlights used to bleed uh, in the images. So it's quite a distinctive look that I've never managed to quite replicate digitally. Right. Um, and I used to shoot on medium format infrared film and then develop them myself. But then I, I realised that you can do infrared digitally and that the sensors in your camera are even more sensitive to infrared than infrared film. And they put a special filter on to block it and you can convert a camera by removing that filter and putting an infrared filter in its place. It's a one-way ticket for your camera. You can only shoot infrared then, but you can get it a more sensitive infrared shot than you could actually get with infrared film. Mm. Uh, infrared film was sensitive to about, the best infrared films, about 9, 20 nanometers. Um, the sensor in your camera will go over a thousand nanometers. Surely you must be quite keen if you're gonna convert a camera um, specifically you've got to like infrared and it's a mar it's a marmite it's a marmite topic um, certainly camera club judges don't like it a lot no um, but I, I take the pictures for myself more than for, for judges yeah it's the worst thing you can do is to take photographs uh, in the way a judge wants to see them because it's just completely it's not like you, you as a photographer anymore, it's, it's it? not it's not expensive now to convert cameras to, uh, there's far more people doing it the first one had it had it converted in the states um, which cost cost more because of the postage. The postage was about sixty pounds. But there's two or three companies in in the UK doing it now, uh, and a lot of people convert them themselves and put them on eBay. But you take a you take a, take a risk when you buy a fee because you don't know quite what you're going to get. No. Uh, I'd, I'd prefer if you're talking about an expensive digital SLR. I'd rather have it converted by somebody who's doing it regularly and know yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Well, Mike, it's been absolutely lovely talking to you. You're a very, very uh, knowledgeable guy when it comes to photography. And uh, I think we've had a really good interview here, so I can't shake it on me. Yeah, absolutely. Best it's been fun. Thank you. Yeah. I don't like being in front of the camera, but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs>